So how did we get uh, where we are? Or where are we, I guess, is the question. And here I am going to actually go down a list so I don't get this because I know there's press here. And anytime I get a number wrong, they, they kill me on it for the next three days. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, wh what is the state of, of, the, uh, of the America under, under the Trump administration? Um, you've got unemployment at 3.8%. Uh, the last time it was lower than that, I was one years old, 1968. Um, business fixed investment, um, which is, sounds really, really boring, but is really, really important when you're trying to, to drive economic growth, is up 10.4% on an annual basis so far this year. There's been more than 3 million jobs created since the election. Um, the, the April revenues uh, that we took in at the Treasury were over half a trillion dollars um, in one month. It was the largest take um, ever. And I think everybody sort of paid attention to the Atlanta Fed that is still saying here, as we're getting to the close of the quarter, um, that we're, it could be as high as 4.5% growth um, this quarter. Um, those, are, those are great numbers. Um, those are absolutely great numbers. How do we get here? And we, we can we'll talk a little bit about a little bit. We, we call it, um, we try and use the term that no one else uses, so I'm going to continue to try and use it, um, called maganomics, which is just this idea of making America great again economics, um, which sort of takes everything. Everything. And if I ask folks, they say, well, you know, what is Trump all about? What, what, what's the plan? And I'm like, well, Maganomics is the plan. They say, what is that? Well, it's 3% growth. I actually had to stop talking about 3% growth um, and talk about a healthy American economy and a booming American economy. And actually I had to do so uh, because of a conversation I had with my good friend Trey Gowdy, uh, who would make a great Supreme Court justice, but a lousy mathematician. <laughs> I, I was explaining to Trey the difference between 3% growth and 2% growth, and he's like, what's the big deal? It's just 1%. I'm like, no, it's not. It's 50%. Um, it's a big difference between 2 and 3, and that's when I knew I had to change the message. Um, so when we talk about Maganomics, everything pointing towards a healthy American economy again. We, we can talk about um, the tax bill uh, if you want to. We can talk about uh, everybody focuses on the rates, and look, lower rates are great, and I know it's important, um, but beyond the rates, um, how is this different than what the, the Bush administration did? We have fundamentally changed the structure of the way that we tax wealth in this country. Um, the people, people focus on those low individual rates, and those are great. I choose to look at things um, like the, uh, uh, the, the deduction for capital expenses. Um, that is a huge, huge uh, change. I, I, was a, I was a small business person. I, I used to have S-Corps and LLCs and so forth. And I was always frustrated with the fact that even if I, if, I, if I made $100 one year, and that was all my profit, and I took a, all of that money and I plowed it back into my business, I didn't take a penny out of the business. I left in the business. I still had to pay tax on that $100. And I always thought that was wrong. Um, and in fact, um, my first exposure, the first chance to talk about that nationally was when I was, and I don't talk about this much, I was, um, uh, I advised um, Rick Perry uh, when he ran for uh, president in 2012. Uh, and the part I don't talk about is the part where I was his um, uh, uh, debate prep guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which apparently even Rick has forgotten because we were at a dinner one night and he's sitting there and my, my wife and I are chatting with, with, uh, with, his, with him and his wife. And he says, you know, it says to Pam, he says, my wife, he says, Pam, there's three things I really like about your husband. And he says, he's really bright and I can't remember the other two. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, Rick, that's really funny to everybody except me. So, um, but we come up with this idea uh, of, of, of not taxing um, people who left their money in their business. They only tax you when you take it out. And we didn't get all the way there with the corporate tax uh, reform uh, bill that we passed this year, but we got close. And so for the next five years, if you want to plug, plug all of your, your money back in your business, reinvest in yourself, reinvest in your workers, uh, reinvest in your ideas and your dreams, um, we are going to give you a tax incentive to do that. Uh, that is a tremendous incentive um, to grow. And I think you, by the way, um, someone asked me before, I was here, there was a, uh, uh, some um, of, maybe it was Jared Bernstein or somebody else saying that there's no way um, that the tax impact, uh, tax changes have any impact on economic growth. And I think that's actually right. Um, I think what you're seeing right now is the impact of the other things that we have done. And I'll talk about what Naomi's doing in a second on, on deregulation. But I actually think things are gonna, could actually get even better because I don't think you've seen the full impact uh, of the tax bill into the overall um, economy. What else are we doing um, uh, outside of taxes? We're, we're energy. Of course, the, the one thing that everybody uh, sort of ignores um, on, on the tax bill was the fact that we got Anwar opened up again. Um, it took us 40 years um, to do that. 
I think we finally got the XL um, uh, pipeline permitted. Um, the uh, DOE just approved a new permit for a huge LNG plant down in Texas. Um, we've ended the prohibition on coal leasing on federal lands again and again and again. In fact, um, Ryan Zinke, who's a good friend of mine, a little bit crazy, um, but I suppose you have to be to be a Navy SEAL, um, has a tremendous idea uh, on incentives, on using incentives. And the incentive plan that we're trying to get Congress to approve is, look, uh, I have this many leases on federal lands. Okay? If I can get a marginal increase in those leases and increase the money coming in from the leases, let me keep half of it to improve the national parks. What a tremendous incentive and what a tremendous way to use money efficiently and to get them to actually do something um, for the right reason. So that those types of ideas are flowing through. Those types of accomplishments are throwing, flowing through, which is why I think in large part you're seeing us now. I think we're the largest oil producer in the world, largest gas producer in the world. That's the first time we've uh, been a net exporter of natural gas for 60 years. So there again, within energy, everything's sort of moving in the right direction, moving towards a healthy American economy again.